Hi guys, welcome to video number six of our budget mini quad build where I'm trying to build the cheapest ZMR250 possible. Now one of the things we need to do next is to get the receiver antenna mounted. And the way this one's been supplied, it's got like this uh, strange tube and heat shrink over it. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just try and cut this off. And basically I wanna get a look at what's inside. Okay, so that's an interesting design. It's something that I haven't seen before. It's, it's definitely not something that I'm familiar with. But one thing to keep in mind is that the length of the antenna section is very important. I believe it's 26.2 millimeters for the 2.4 gigahertz. But anyway, what we actually need to do is get this mounted out the top of the frame. And the easiest way to do that is just with a cable tie and some heat shrink. So I've just got myself a, a cable tie here and a piece of heat shrink. And all I want to do is just wrap the cable tie around the frame here. And I basically want the cable tie to stick up. And then if we have a look at the length here, I want to just cut the cable tie off just above the top of the antenna. So now we've got these two the same length. Now next, I want to just slide a piece of heat shrink over the top of it all. I made the cable tie a little bit longer than the antenna, so I don't need to worry about cutting off the antenna. And just cut the heat shrink off. I can feel there where the end is. And now I want to just grab my trusty heat gun and shrink this up. Now you could do that with the soldering iron if you really wanted to, but the heat gun just makes it a bit easier. So now we have our antenna mounted on our frame. Now the next thing we need to do is get our flight controller in and screw our frame down. And what I've noticed is that with the standoffs that are supplied here, the clearance between the servo connectors and the top of the frame is, well, there is no clearance. So what I've actually done is just cut a couple of pieces of foam. They're quite a bit bigger than the gap between the top of the standoff. And I'm just planning to basically sandwich this in and use just the pressure from the top plate to hold it in place. Now I'm going to run these ugly cables underneath the flight controller. There is one, uh, one thing that we definitely want to do because it's much easier to do before we get the frame on. We want to just put on our little rubber isolators for the camera mount and they go through these holes here. It's really quite simple. All you need is just like a spare bit of servo wire and just wrap it around the lip inside the grommet and then pull your servo wire through the hole and there you go, it's in. Okay, so now I just want to route these ugly cables underneath the, the flight controller, between the flight controller and the power distribution board. And then I'm gonna put on my pieces of foam, which are just gonna sandwich that flight controller in place. And then I'm actually good, finally, to go ahead and screw the top frame plate down. And for now, I'm not gonna bother installing the, the FPV camera mount because at the moment, this is a line of sight flyer and it's not gonna be flying FPV. I'm going to cover hooking this quad up for FPV in future videos coming soon. I'm not doing any of these up tight yet. Okay, so you can see there the way that flight controller is being held in place and it's, it's really like, I can't even easily move it now and it's not even screwed down yet. So let's go ahead and screw it down. And you'll know that I'm not putting Loctite on these because this top plate's gonna come on and off quite a bit in the quad's lifetime. Okay, and now finally we have our mini quad. And there is no way that that flight controller is moving. That's like gonna be a serious crash that's gonna dislodge that. And now we're looking real good. Lastly, we need to put on our camera plate. And again, we just use the method of a piece of servo wire and pull it through. And it is a good idea just to cable tie through there just so that you don't lose it in a crash. You don't want this cable tie on tight. You want it to be able to vibrate because that's the whole point of the rubber damping. But it just means that if it does pop off in a crash, 
you've got your little uh, cable tie there, it makes, makes certain you're not gonna lose it. So now we're at the point where we need to install the battery. And the battery that I've chosen for this build is the Turnergy Nanotech 1300 milliamp hour, 45 to 90 C discharge. And that's capable of delivering more than enough power. Uh, it's nice and light and it's gonna fit on our quad with no issue. And basically what I'm planning to do here is use some more of the industrial strength Velcro and I'll put some Velcro on the battery and some Velcro on the quad. So here I'm just gonna cut some more of this Velcro. And a good little tip for your Velcro is uh, don't put the hook loop part onto the quad because that'll pick up all kinds of dirt and grass and stuff like that. You put the furry part on and then that'll stay relatively clean. So we don't need too much of it. It's really just there to stop the battery slipping and sliding around. Obviously making sure we don't cover the screws. Nice amount of pressure there. And now we can stick the battery on and already that's that's good I bought some of these uh, velcro cable managers and you can buy rolls of them it's pretty easy to get and again just making sure that the furry side is out so that we don't get all stuff sticking onto it if you leave the the hook and loop part facing out then yeah it's gonna get all dust and grass and all kinds of stuff and now hopefully we should be able to just plug our battery in and have some action and now this is our mini quad with everything except the props installed almost ready to go and i say almost because the last step that we have to do is quickly just do our sticks calibration on our transmitter and to do that we need to go back over and plug the flight controller into clean flight